Matthew, everyday audiophile, music lover, beer enthusiast. Now, as always, we're going to start with my trusty beverage. This is the Good People Hazy Snake IPA. This should be pretty good. This is one that I picked up from Gulf Shores recently, and I have been dying to try it. I've just been saving it for videos with you. So let's give this a pour, and let's talk about today's video. Oh, this is actually a good pour once in a while. Nice. And yes, that's pretty good. I could drink that. A little bit light for a hazy, but still nice. Okay, so last week I talked about Diretta and my thoughts on it, what sound changes I heard in my system, what improvements I heard. And there were some great comments mentioning settings that I needed to try and optimizations that could be made further. And I will definitely get to those. Those are in my line of things that I want to try in addition to Audio Linux and Euphony OS. There's a lot of things to compare and see just what difference they do make in the system. But before that, today's video is going to be a setup guide for Gen 2 Player and for Diretta. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so before we get started, let's talk about the hardware that you'll need. Now, I've set this up in a left to right as far as, let's think of source all the way to the DAC. In this case, I'm just using the topping D10 because it keeps this setup compact for demonstration purposes. On the left-hand side here, this is the linear power supply that we use for my Raspberry Pi 4B. Next to that is the Holo Audio Red, a little dusty there. And then finally, right, the topping D10. And I guess while we're talking about it, we can take a peek at uh, a guest appearance from my home lab, which hosts all of my extra services that I use for family and work and all those fun things. But that's not what we're talking about. So what you're gonna need, if you don't have a linear power supply, that's not an issue. You can use the standard one that comes with the Raspberry Pi. This is just what I am using. As you can see, I have an ethernet dongle here, a USB ethernet dongle, and then an extra US ethernet cable plugged right into the Holo Audio Red. So the way that this works is through your USB ethernet dongle, this is the one, if we follow this lead all the way here, right? This is the one that's plugged into my switch right here. This is the one that's plugged into the network. The other one goes straight to the Holo Audio Red, and this one only has one ethernet port. So in essence, this one here is connected to the Raspberry Pi, but not directly to the switch. And then as you can see, we have the USB out, and that's going to the D10. And if we flip this around, we can see that it is powered up correctly. It's just not receiving a signal right now. And, and all in all, this is what makes up the Diretta system. You have the Raspberry Pi here, this is the host, this is the target, and this is the DAC. Of course, you can use any of these outputs with the Holo Audio Red. I'm just using USB, though up in my main system, I'll switch between USB and I2S. They both work equally well. Now, as I am fairly used to networking and other IT related things, quote unquote, I have no issues starting the setup with the Holo Audio Red and the Raspberry Pi connected to each other. But if you don't know the IP addresses that have been assigned to either of these, it's going to be a lot easier for you if you take the Ethernet cable from here, so we just have it right here from the Holo Audio Red, and we plug that straight into the network instead. That way you can be sure you know what the IP address is of this unit before we go ahead and connect it to the host, which is, this is gonna be the final setup here. Okay, so before we do anything, we're obviously gonna to need to download Gen2 Player. Uh, the website here is gen2players.com, and you know, this is a nice looking website from the get-go, but we're gonna go straight to download. As you can see here, they explain the options for when you decide, if you decide to purchase Gen2 Player. Uh, by default, for 69 euros, this is for one system, and this is an unlimited license, which means it never expires. 
but for an additional cost, so 39 euros for this kernel option, or 49 euros for the EXTRM option, or you can get both for an additional 69 euros. These three are yearly subscriptions. And what they are supposed to buy you are either custom kernel types, maybe you wanna try different kernels, or extra ways that that kernel is compiled, which build in additional optimizations for the device that you're running Gen 2 Player on. I myself, I haven't tried this yet, but I will at some point. It's so that you can't do these with a trial, which is why I never try them. I'll have to buy it and try it that way, I guess. So we're gonna go ahead and say that we have read and agreed and go to the download page. And since I am on a Raspberry Pi 4, that system is just right over here off to the side, I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the ARC 64 section. So I'm gonna do the RPI 4 64-bit version. Uh, and download anyways, there we go. After it's downloaded, we can go ahead and close all those extra tabs, go to the download link again, and you can see at the very top, they, they recommend Raspberry Pi Imager or Rufus. I've used both, and for Windows, Raspberry Pi Imager is fine. They both do a, a great job. But what I will say is, instead of clicking on these links, you should search for them yourself on Google. This is just coming from me being, I don't trust anyone else. So I'm gonna to go to Google, I'm gonna type in Raspberry Pi Imager. Oop, the first one takes you to the official website, and then from here we can download either for Windows, Mac OS, or Ubuntu. Go ahead and download this, get it installed, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so after you have gotten your micro SD card, plugged it into your adapter and the USB, all of that great stuff, we're gonna run Raspberry Pi Imager. For the device, we're doing this for a Raspberry Pi 4. Doesn't really matter what you select though, since we are providing our own custom image, this is just to make their options easier. We're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom for operating system and say use custom and we're going to select the, the Gen 2 Player RPI4 64-9.00. I have three of them downloaded. Don't worry about that. Open, choose storage. It should show you a storage that you mounted. And then we're gonna hit next. By default, I would say you can select no, but if you did wanna customize the settings, it is something that you can certainly do. So if you go into edit settings, you can change the host name, you can change the username and password if you were to SSH into it, but that is entirely up to you. Since you're gonna be using our web UI, it's not super important. All right, we're gonna close out of that. By default, I'm gonna say no, and all the existing data will be deleted. Let's go ahead and continue. This is gonna write, it'll take about five to 10 minutes, so we're gonna come back when this is over. Okay, so now that we're here, you can see that I have two windows. The one on the left is the host Raspberry Pi 4. The one on the right is my target. The first thing that you're gonna do is it's, it's gonna look more like this one on the left where there's not many options. You have register, reboot, shutdown, home system, and, and a couple other options. It's not gonna look like what we have here on the right as this one's already registered. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Gen2 Player PC key, hit execute, and whatever you see here, it tells you what to do. You're gonna copy paste everything in here and you're gonna send it to that email address. Okay, it's the morning, I have received my key. He's not in the US, so it, it does take some time sometimes if you do it over the weekend or late at night. You may not get it within the 30 minutes to an hour that has usually been the case for me. Uh, but in the email, it's going to say Gen 2 Player Key V2. So that's where we're going to go. There is a username and a key that you have to put in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This will be blocked out. We're gonna hit execute and we're gonna let it run. Okay, so after it's done running, it's gonna say 
you need to go to update install remove and use GP update. So we're gonna do just that. We're gonna hit execute one more time. And this is where it's gonna go and add all of the extra menus and reboot so that you basically have a fully functioning Gen 2 player now at this point. After that, you just hit refresh and bam, you're there. You have all these extra menus. As you can see, the Gen 2 player that we have here on the left looks similar, exactly the same as we have on the right. So I had already set up the target with the key and everything that's required. I just went through doing it on the host. So you'll have to do this twice, one for your target and one for your host, if you're gonna use Gen 2 player for both. The next thing that I like to do is switch the ethernet cables on the devices so that the target is plugged directly into the host instead of into the switch. And before we do that, you should go up to the top of your browser and make note of the IP address for each one. So on my host, it's .212, and on my target, it is .128. For you, it may be 192.168.1. whatever, or .0. Dot whatever. For me, it's not um, just because I like to set my network up differently but keep note of that IP address because it will come in use when you are accessing these at a later point in time. Okay, so like I said, we are going to take the ethernet cable out of the switch for the target. That's right here. And we're just gonna move this over straight to right here. So now we won't be able to access this directly from the network. For now, it is just plugged directly into the host. Okay, so I'm back at my desk, and if we go to the one on the right and I hit refresh, we should see that this fails to load. And the fact that it hasn't loaded already, you can see the spinner at the top, that just means we can't access it, and that's fine. On the host side, on the window on the left, what we're gonna do is we are gonna go to, let's find it here, system base config, network bridge, from there, we're gonna to go to setting. We're gonna choose iFace name one of ethernet one. This should be the USB dongle. That's what you need to make sure. If you have on your host, you have the switch being plugged into the USB dongle and then the actual, whichever one is plugged into your target should be the one that's actually on the Raspberry Pi. That's ethernet zero, ETH zero. So we're gonna hit execute on this. And what this basically is gonna do is going to allow us to access the target from the network still. So we see it's setting up the network bridge. Okay, so we should be good. Now if I go back to this side and hit refresh, it may take a sec, but we will be able to get back to it. There we go. So on the right we have our target again that we can access. Now, we're gonna go ahead and set up Diretta. On the host side on the left, we are going to do Diretta host and hit execute. And on the right, we're gonna do Diretta target and execute. Now, I already have this installed on both, but at the very bottom, we can see our input. We want enable, install, reinstall, update. So I'm gonna hit one for that on the host. And on the right for target, I'm also gonna hit one and we're just gonna let this script run. Okay, so after you have recycled the machines and you've refreshed the web UI, we should be able to go back to Diretta on both and see that on the host here on the left-hand side, we have Diretta host protocol config and on the target, Diretta target config. It's up to you on these options, whether you enable or disable them. By default, it should just work on the target. The very next thing that we need to do on the target is simply select a DAC. For me, I have generic I2S or I will do DAC USB. Both of those work fine. If you have a specific DAC that is on this list already, you can choose that one. These include optimizations and settings, preset settings for working with that DAC specifically. But you don't need to select it. You can just do generic or DAC USB. Those at the top work fine. After you hit execute, 
Gen 2 player will again need to reboot. It takes a couple minutes, like I said, and you'll be off to the races. That's all you really need to do on the target side. On the host side, what I like to do next is go into Enable Disable Software. This is where you are going to enable or disable the streaming options that you would like to use. So since I primarily use this, the host, with Rune Bridge, that's what I'm going to go ahead and enable. Enable, hit execute, it's going to call the script. And then we're done. Rune Bridge now works. The final thing that we need to do, there's really two things left. We're going to go back to System Base Config, go to Network Bridge, and we're going to remove it. This is crucially important for, Di for Diretta to have the best sound quality possible. Again, after you hit Execute, it's going to reboot. After it's rebooted, the last thing that we need to do is go back to Diretta, Diretta Host Protocol Config, and in the interface, we're going to type in ETH0. This is the interface that should be connected from the host to the target. We're going to hit execute on that. It's going to stop Diretta. It's going to start with the new settings. And then from that point, Diretta is set up. You have Rune Bridge or whatever you're using, UPnP, Cobas, whatnot. That's running on the host. And then through this host protocol configuration, you're telling it to send its data where the Diretta target lives through that Ethernet zero interface to where your target is now. So if you go to Rune, as I am in my case, I can see that Diretta target is showing up. And there are several options. There's three here. The difference between them, you just need to try them all out and see which one either works or which one sounds the best. That's completely up to you. From there though, that's all that's really required to get Diretta working. There are a lot of customization options here that you can use to tune the sound. I haven't tried that yet myself, but I will very shortly. But from there, you're good to go. Let me know how it sounds. And until then, I will see y'all next week.